Hey guys, Stealth here. Let's have another look at the South Africa DLC that's coming up for Wargame. I have done a video on this in the past, but that was when they had just announced it and threw around a couple of names of various units. But since then, they have done a couple of updates, and I thought I'd turn all those updates into one short video for you, so you're back up to date with what is going on. At least, insofar as we know. Now, South Africa is going to be a very mobile nation. It's going to be a nation that relies on speed. And my concern at the moment is how good is their staying power? We still don't know very much about their armor section. There's no real stats as opposed to one infantry card that we do have access to. And, um, well, if you don't have a lot of staying power, it's going to be a lot of hit and run. But they do have the vehicles for that. So, welcome to my speech on <laughs> Wargame Red Dragon, South Africa. Um, recently they threw out this screenshot of all the different infantry units. And they said, well, um, here's the screenshot and these are the, the unit cards, or at least the unit icons. And you figure out what's what. Um, they gave us the list of the units, and I will link to all the upgrades, all the, the news posts in the description, so you can have a look for yourself. We have um, the Bokop, which is just your standard line infantry. Mechbat, I think, is more shock infantry-ish. Parabat is um, airborne brigade. Trackers and parapathfinders. I'm not sure if I put those in the right place. It could be reversed. And then we have um, well, those two different units that look like the uh, the sniper or the the special forces card. One I think is the SASF, and the other one is the SASF sniper. But I don't exactly know who is who. So the SASF sniper, um, I currently have it set as over here. It could as well be this guy. We have the buffaloes, light infantry unit behind enemy lines. Uh, the Burgermacher reservists. Sappers, pretty much as you know them. And then, and this is another question mark for me, the Strela 2 and the Strela 3. Uh, they're both anti-air, Strela 3 being slightly better stats-wise, as they probably carry the same Strelas that we already know from the game. The Strela 2 um, could very well be that one. We'll just have to see when the game comes out. They also have two recoilless rifles slash anti-tank units. Uh, one is the B-10. I think that is the one that is similar to the Shankasha shoe, as they mentioned in the post. And the other one is some form of AT. From their post, it is an ATGM Milan team. And again, uh, it could be this guy, it could be that guy with the ATGM. I don't know, since the background of the card is the same. And then we have the Inflict. Um, I think it's this one, because it's the only one that I couldn't place otherwise. And this is a sort of artillery infantry unit. It's going to be a weird beast. It's the first type of that unit that we have. And we'll just have to kind of see how they work. I think they might be somewhat similar to what Ashen Shadows has, which is the commando uh, mortar teams. And they're capable of lobbing high explosive shells over some range. Which is, of course, better range than what the enemy infantry will have to return fire. So I think that that's what the Inflict is going to do, but we do not have a unit card. We do have a unit card for the Bokop. Um, standard line infantry. Nothing really too spectacular that jumps out. They got the RPG-7s. They're, oh, they're okay. Um, don't expect these to do a ton of damage to vehicles. It's only 14 AP. It's not stellar. Uh, maneuverability on these is 20 kilometers an hour, so that's normal size of uh, 10 guys. Oh, sorry, strength of 10 guys. The Vector Air 1 and the Bren doesn't seem to be terribly spectacular to me. Then, um, the SASF. I did post this icon with it. I just picked one of the two. I'm thinking that this would be their Special Forces unit. And I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to find this in the Recon tab or in the Infantry tab. But I'm thinking Recon tab because they have Strelas. Um, on the other hand, you got the, the SAS. Those in the British units are not reconnaissance units. They are in fact in the infantry tab. So where exactly this one's going to go, I'm not too sure. They have an interesting selection of weapons. Um, they have the R5 battle rifle, and more on that later. The LRAC F1 that we already know from the game, and the Strelum. 
Uh, I'm not terribly happy with this trailer because it's generally not very accurate. The 90s variant, however, comes with a stinger, which is definitely more accurate. It also comes with the Appalas, which delivers a lot more damage than the Elrec F1, and again, the R5 battle rifle. It makes them versatile, but it also limits them. They're not going to be great at fighting other infantry, most likely, because they don't have a grenade launcher or a machine gun, something like that, to start dealing more and more damage to enemy units. Alright, the pair of Pathfinders do come with a grenade launcher. It's going to be either of these two, because these definitely look like reconnaissance units. The R5 Assault Rifle. And here I was a bit confused, because... They keep referencing the R5 Battle Rifle, and then it suddenly switches to the R5 Assault Rifle. So I'm not exactly sure if that's the same weapon or not. It also comes with the HK-21 LMG and the Grenade Launcher. Keep in mind, units can only fire two out of three weapons at any given time, so if you are doing a bit more standoffish fighting, I imagine you might want to use the LMG. Close in turn off the LMG and use the grenade launcher. Or, if it's possible, use the LMG and the automatic uh, grenade launcher and just skip the R5, maybe something like that. We'll just have to do a bit of testing. And unfortunately, I don't know when that testing is going to be. I don't know when the DLC is going to hit. I'm not in contact with Eugen. They haven't reached out to me at all, uh, nor I to them. So I know as much as you guys simply from reading the posts and well, doing a bit of theory crafting. Um, when it comes to transports, you might recognize these from the posts that Eugen has put up, as well as from my previous video. Um, these are the standard Samuel trucks. Not particularly interesting, um, just a regular transport, probably not even armed. They come, or they, they transport the Bokop, the Parabat, the Buffaloes. That's a question mark, because the Buffaloes weren't really too clear on what they were transported by. We got the sappers, the burgermacht, so that's reservists, and the Milan. Transporting a Milan in these, um, well, especially if you want to rush them to the front line, they're probably not going to be the best option. I think we're going to see this as your regular truck. So let's say for stats, the Semil might have something like 60, 70 kph off road. Of course, 150 on road because it is wheeled. Mm, I'm expecting excellent autonomy on these, as with most wheeled vehicles, but very low protection, if any. They're soft-skinned vehicles, um, which implies that they do have a skin, but I don't expect these to stop more than small arms fire. A vehicle that's probably faster and definitely more heavily protected is going to be the Buffalo APC. Again, I don't know his stats, but I'm expecting these to be a bit more expensive. They look like something you would find on a farm. Uh, it reminds me a bit of a dump truck from Farming Simulator, but it is definitely not that. The slated undercarriage of it is to protect against mines and bombs. So this way, hopefully, you can keep your infantry safe, although you could still argue that the blast, just the sheer concussion force, might shake up your infantry quite a bit. There are also uh, images of these things being armed with, um, I think, a 50 millimeter machine gun, so a 15 um, or a 7.62 is what you can probably expect on these things. They're going to be transporting the Bokop, the Parabats, the Buffaloes, the Sappers, the Burger Mac, and the Milan. The Caspir, uh, the battle bus, or at least <laughs> it looks like one, uh, is going to once again transport the Bokop. The Bokop can be transported seemingly by everything. Also the Sappers and the Milan. I would actually very much prefer it if these were also capable of transporting light infantry. Because they, at least from their appearance, seem very fast. Or like they could be very fast. Moderate protection might come with some form of a machine gun to assist your infantry in suppressing enemy units. And uh, well, I just think it looks interesting. This is a vehicle that I could fairly credibly put a larger group of guys in. Uh, as opposed to these, where you just pile them in the back, uh, potentially horizontally, to make them fit. And then we have the Ratel. Um, this is their IFV. There are various different units that the Ratel will provide. Um, the, Ra the Ratel undercarriage is going to have all sorts of different weapon systems on it. Again, transporting the Bokop, the Mechbat, the Sappers and the Milans. 
Um, judging by this shot, and I'm not sure if it's going to be translated into game, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> either this plate over here is a blast plate that you can just flip up, or it could be an amphibious plate that you extend forward to keep the driver from, uh, well, not from drowning, but from making sure that he can still see stuff. Moving on to armor. Um, unfortunately, not a whole lot of stats are available, but they did provide this little gif over here. Various versions of the Oliphant. Uh, Mark 1, Mark 1 Alpha, Mark 1 Bravo, and Mark 1 B Optimum. I think the Optimum sort of in tandem with the Logim is going to be their super heavy. Considering they're 23 AP, they're probably going to sit in the 160, 165 price range. I don't think they're going to go all the way up to 170, especially since they don't have an ATGM. As for reload speed and such, I can't tell you. We do not yet have a unit card. What is going to be very interesting is the Roycott 76 or 105 millimeter variant. These units travel at 120 kilometers an hour off road. If you thought the Vickers was bad, this thing is probably going to be worse. But the post does mention it is a glass cannon. They're very fast. They're going to rely on hit and run tactics to do a lot of damage and then immediately pull back because staying power is very limited. And that is something that, well, I can get behind it. I mean, you don't want to have a 120 kilometer hour uh, vehicle just roaming around in your front lines or in the back of your lines in the worst case scenario, which can still take a ton of hits. That would not really be fair. So, yes, I understand the glass cannons. Um, my concern, however, is that the rest of the armor is not quite going to be able to keep up with the rest of your vehicles. So the, the Oliphant, I believe, is based on the Centurion tank. That thing is just outdated, at least depending on how much they have upgraded it. But the Centurions in Wargame are terrible at going off-road. So this is something that, once again, is going to reinforce the hit-and-run tactics. You're going to have to hit or run away from your own tanks, just dash forward. Hope to do some damage, potentially flank the enemy, and then immediately pull back to behind the line that your tank is currently at. At least that's the sort of playstyle that I'm suspecting we're going to see with these units. Recon. Um, they got the Aland 90, which is a, just a flat-out copy of the AML 90, and the Aland 90 Antac has the Antac ATGM that we already have in-game. Uh, the Anzac units have that. And once again, a Roycott, this time with a 76, so quite similar to what we have here in the tank section, but this is a recon variant, so it's going to have more optics and probably better stealth. That very much uh, likens it to what the French have. They have the, what is it, the AML or the AMX, you know, that, that fast uh, wheeled gun vehicle. They have it in their tank tab, they also have it in the recon tab. Exactly how it's going to balance out, we'll just have to see. I think the recon unit, uh, the unit in the recon tab, might be slightly more expensive. Moving on to AGGMs, uh, we now know that they have the Rover 106 and the Ferret Mark II 106. These are recoilless rifles. Again, very very fragile. Hit and run. And judging by <laughs> what we've seen so far from the Rovers in game. I'm thinking that they have just the ability to take one shot, and maybe not even that. The Ferret Mark II has a slightly better um, recoilless rifle, at least that's what the post says. The stats are unknown. The unit that you can see on the screen is what I believe is the, uh, the Rattle ZT3 Alpha 1. Um, or rather, that's the missile system. It has the, the, well, they call it the Swift Missile, 70% accuracy, 2625 meter range, but 20 AP. That's interesting. 20 AP. You're not really going to be able to get through the front of most of the enemy heaviest armor units. That's a concern. It's going to have to get offset by a more mobile playing style. So you might have, for example, one of your tanks in contact with the enemy. They take the hits. 
one of these things dashes out, tries to flank the enemy tank and throw an HGM into the side. They can stay at range. Um, we don't, unfortunately, know yet anything about the speed of the missile, because Wargame has various speeds of various missiles, and well, if it's a really slow missile, then that whole hit-and-run plan that I just suggested is not quite going to work. The Ferret Antac is another HGM vehicle. It is something that we already know. Uh, and the Ferret Mark II Milan is just another Ferret, so it's another hit-and-run vehicle with a slightly better missile, or at least <laughs> it's going to be better than the Antac anyway. The problem here again that I see is the Milan. I don't get lucky with Milans most of the time. They just don't hit for me. And because they don't hit, and because your vehicles are so fragile, and because the missile is slow, let's not forget that, it's not a fast ATGM, the enemy unit, whatever it is, has some opportunity to get into range and shoot you. And even if you have your Milan more or less on target, if the launching vehicle gets destroyed, that is it for your AGGM. So exactly how good their anti-tank capability is going to be? I am not particularly optimistic here. I'm not particularly optimistic. The AGGM vehicles are great for hit and run, much like everything else in the South African deck, but whether that's going to work in game? Let's just wait and see. Moving on to artillery. Um, they gave us a few more stats. They have the Rover 107, packing 16 107 millimeter tubes. Valkyrie with 24 times 127 millimeters and the Bataleur with uh, 127 millimeter cluster. These are all wheeled. These are all fast. So expect shoot and scoot. Not exactly hit and run, but shoot and scoot, so by the time that the last shells are in the air, the vehicle is probably already on the move. Which means that if you're playing South Africa, be very, very good, or at least make it a habit of yourself, to have a unit move directly after shooting. That way you have probably the best way or the best chance of keeping them alive. Mortars, uh, Eland 60, Ratel 81 and Ratel 120. Again, a lot more of the Ratels. 81mm um, mortar, 60mm mortar, and 120s, all on very mobile vehicles. Some, well, actually quite a few of the mortars in Wargame right now are tracked vehicles. They are not as quick to get out of the, the firing position. These things are going to be more annoying, because they're just very fast. When it comes to self-propelled guns, they got a very old unit, the Sexton, and a quite new unit, the G645 Rhino. 40 kilometer range on the howitzer with um, a lot of speed because it's wheeled. And this is the unit that you can see on screen. That's the Rhino. Stats, as far as high explosive, I think will be in line with the rest of the game. So 6, 7, 8, something like that. Enough to start sniping units, enough to start putting down suppression fire, and then immediately be on the way. Uh, they're going to line up very well with the rest of the deck, because you really do not want to have a tracked howitzer, for example, that is just not going to be capable of cap uh, keeping up with your fast wheeled transports and your fast wheeled attack units. Anti-air. Two anti-air gun vehicles, the uh, Eastervark 20mm, and the Roycott ZA-35. Um, they say it's a bit like a Gepard, with, I believe, a slightly lower rate of fire, um, but slightly higher accuracy, something like that. So let's say a Gepard-ish vehicle. And then for Sams, they have the Cactus, which is a Crotal. They have an improved Crotal variant called the Cactus SAHV, and the Roycott ZA -V uh, sorry, ZH... Uh, English. ZAHVM, which is their anti-plane unit. And this, much like the Roycott ZA-35, is radar guided, so turn them off if you're not actively using them. Rocket planes? Or actually lots and lots of planes, because the South African Air Force apparently is really substantial. They got the CL-13B, just a probably a one-way trip plane. Two times 18 millimeter, oh sorry, two times 18, so that's 36. 68 millimeter rockets. Slow, no ECM to speak of, uh, not very much in the sense of killing power. 
probably a one-way trip for most of those planes. The Impala Mark II, supposedly slightly better. They have a little bit more firepower, they have double the rockets, and they have twin 30mm guns. The bombers, we have the Vampire and the Canberra. The Vampire drops napalm, the Canberra is a carpet bomber. And, uh, well, the survivability on these is going to be... For the Vampire, probably not great. Canberra might be a little better. Anti-tank planes, only one dedicated anti-tank plane. It's the Buccaneer S Mark 50. Four times HGM, 30 AP. Um, important, as they mentioned in the post, is that it's a MACLOS weapon. So that's a manual command line of sight. It's less accurate than the accuracy that you might know from other weapons, other HGMs. But if it hits, you do deliver 30 AP, which is really nice. If the plane, however, gets shot down, then your HGM is also lost. So try to suppress enemy uh, anti-air and try to get air dominance with some of the fighters. As for fighters, um, several variants, and this is, again, uh, they have a lot of planes. They got, oh, not, not the Mirage, but the Mirage uh, 3C with one longer range missile, that's the R530, and two short range missiles, which, according to Eugen, are basically improved M9Bs. The Mirage F1CZ has four of those Kukris, so four improved M9Bs. Supposedly, uh, I think, useful for dealing with helicopters. Cheetah C, two times long range darter and two times medium range darter. And the Carver, four times long range and two times U darter, which is an improved version of the darter. So that's more of their, uh, let's say, their best anti plane unit or their best fighter. Multi rolls, more Mirage. The Mirage uh, 3 Easy. HGMs and AAs, this is one of their multi rolls. The other multi roll is uh, cluster bombs plus AA. We got four Mark 82 bombs and AA. And the Cheetah E is two times laser guided 500 kilogram bombs plus AA. Overall, I'm still not seeing a whole lot of anti tank warfare. Because, well, the Milans, seemingly not very good. Um, that plane that I showed you before, the Buccaneer, with that. Maclos missile, well, it hits hard, but if it doesn't hit, or if the plane gets shot down, once again, you have no HGMs, you have no anti-tank power. Uh, these things with cluster bombs could work, but unlike a missile, you can get out of the way of a uh, cluster bomb. And the Cheetahs, well, they're going to be good bombers, but 500 kilogram laser guided bombs don't generally do that much against armor unless they attack from the top, but I'm not sure about that. And finally, this weird contraption. Uh, Eugen spent a whole section on this. This is the Barb, the Boosted Anti-Radiation Bomb. I was wondering if they were going to get a seed plane, because I believe in the previous uh, video that I did, there was not any information on one of these. It's a Mark 83 bomb with a 127mm booster strapped onto it. It's a really weird contraption. And, here's the kicker, um, it's only high explosive. It's just a high explosive guided seed weapon-ish. They carry two of these, but as Eugen also writes in their post, it is only high explosive. So, for example, if you're uh, firing against an anti-air weapon that has a bit of armor, uh, in the worst case it could be one of those British behemoths that just have a ton of armor and don't care about anything, like the uh, the Marksman variants, they're going to get uh, a little tap on the head and they're just going to keep shooting. Those bombs probably won't do that much. Whether this is going to be actually a viable seat plane, <laughs> I have no idea. South Africa has a large air wing. Uh, let's see if we can tally it up. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different cards of plane. 14 if you carry the Cheetah D seat plane. 14 plane cards is a lot for any single nation. Still, um, if you're not able to effectively suppress enemy anti-air using seed, you're going to have to use your artillery to do it. 
and it's going to be up to the, the stats of the fighters to see if you can get air dominance that way. Now finally, um, as I have mentioned at the start, I think it's going to be a highly mobile deck. Use your artillery to wipe out enemy NTR as quickly as possible if you want to be able to do any kind of bombing runs. Because the planes are, well, the mirages are not that old, but some of the other bombers are older and will not have the speed or the ECM to keep themselves alive. Staying power is a big question mark for me. I don't know how good these things are going to be at a prolonged fight. Um, I think that if you're playing South Africa, you won't want a prolonged fight. You want quick engagements after which you immediately disengage, only to pop up on a different flank. So most likely, if you're fighting South Africa, have a lot of recon all over the place to ensure that any quick uh, momentum can be shut down immediately. And even then, be sure to shut down their NTR, because even their NTR is really quick. 120mm uh, per hour glass cannon is something I'm really interested in using. I love the Vickers Mark 11 in the Anzac deck, and I think that this thing is going to fall right in the same category. So I'm looking very much forward to using that. Artillery is very mobile, uh, infantry is decent, at least from the stats that we have seen so far. That one unit card, plus what we have more or less gathered from the post, such as uh, the, the um, Special Forces having the Appalas, it's going to be, well, probably more than sufficient. And you can drop those guys off very quickly using the various wheel transports. So, that was my little talk on the unit so far. Um, be sure to keep an eye on the news page or um, when I have more news that I think is pressing, I will update you guys through here. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this little, uh, this little presentation of mine, please give it a like because that way you're really helping me out. Thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing what your thoughts are down below and I'll see you guys soon for another video.